mystery still surrounds the countrywide power outage that hit Kenya on Friday night. Very many questions are being asked and there are no answers forthcoming. And what is even very super fascinating but hardly surprising <laughs> is the fact that the government reacted in the usual knee-jerk way. Yeah. Cosmetic way. Which does not help to solve the problem. What do I mean? Some people have lost their jobs. But some people who are more responsible have not lost their jobs. <laughs> because in my opinion, it does not make sense to fire the Kenya Airports Authority boss but to leave the CS Energy in office to leave the managing director of the Kenya Power and Lighting in office does that make sense to you? although according to some Kenyans it may make sense when you see the names of the Kenya Airports Authority boss and those who have been fired and then you also take another look at the names of those people who have kept their jobs. Okay? Because those who have kept their jobs are mainly from the Rift Valley. And those who have lost their jobs are not from the Rift Valley. Unfortunately, that's Kenya for you. But let's dig deeper into this. Because there are some very disturbing aspects that have emerged. There are conspiracy theories that suggest the power outage was deliberate and the whole idea was to execute something that could only be done when there's no power anywhere in Kenya. People have even mentioned the server. <laughs> Where? The imagination of Kenyans. But since we don't deal with conspiracy theories on this channel, some people used to think we do around the year 2020, but they actually discovered we don't. Let me just leave it at that. Since we don't deal with conspiracy theories on this channel, let's look at the facts. Now, the official version of events tells us that the whole outage was caused or triggered by the Electrocana Wind Power Station, yeah, which produces energy via wind generators, windmills if you like, we are told those are the ones who caused the very serious power outage that lasted almost 24 hours in Kenya. Now the Electrocana people have shot back and told us, No, it is not us. What? And what Lekturukana is telling us makes perfect sense. Because we have to start with two very important issues to understand what they are saying. Now relax, we are going to simplify this. Because we are not all electrical engineers. I appreciate that. Yeah, but let's go slowly and make sure we understand the issues here. Those two very important factors that you must keep in mind so that we understand this. Uh, number one, Lake Turkana produces less than 15% of what we need on the grid nationally. Less than 15%. That is very small. Number two, if it is indeed true that Lake Turkana was the problem, then immediately the issues were sorted out there. And we have not seen any issues being sorted out there. But let's just humor some people. When the issues were sorted out there, power would have been restored. No problem. Now we all know that this government has got a reputation for telling lies. That is already an established, proven fact. Yeah, that nobody in their sane mind can argue against. We have too much evidence. The most recent was the alleged meeting between Rail and Ruto that has been pushed very hard. 
that is supposed to have happened in Mombasa. And in that meeting, Raila Kaingia box, according to the government. Yeah. Anyway, let's stick to power in this video. And so the government which never tells us the truth. I mean, it is true governments lie all over the world. But the lies of this government have gone overboard more than 100%, more than 200% compared to other governments. Yeah. This government which has a reputation of telling us lies is saying this is what happened. They are saying that Lake Turkana went off grid. It stopped producing power suddenly. And this caused the entire system to crash. Now don't get confused here. Getting power to your house is not just a matter of connecting wires from where the power is coming from. Please let's get that from the get-go. No! For the simple reason that even this power, when you transport it, there are issues. These lines are going over hundreds of kilometers. And when that happens, there are issues. Step down, step up, etc., etc., which we will not go into. So because of those issues, you need a system. Eh? A system ambayo kuna ukarabati nyingi sana hapa na pale. So this is the system which collapsed. And because this system collapsed, nobody in Kenya had power from the grid. Unajua saingine muizi ya kiiba na kianza kujitetea ana kupatianga clues mingi mingi sana. So it is a good idea to listen to what both sides yeah, of this argument are saying. So let's continue with this statement from the government. Now we are told that an attempt was made to restore the system. But there was no power coming in from Uganda. You know, we have a vital line that comes in from Uganda, yeah, that boosts our system. Indeed, there was a time in Kenya when most of the power we are using was from Uganda. Why? Because of the corruption in building generation dams in Kenya. Indeed, all the Kenyans will remember that the country produced one historical power generation plant that uses sand to generate power. <laughs> of course, it's impossible to generate power. Or rather, that technology, Bado Jafika, of generating power from sand. But that power generation plant cost Kenyans billions. You know what happened? Money went into people's pockets, etc., etc. And a certain cabinet secretary at the time, cabinet minister in those days, called Nicholas Kipiator, Biwot, became fabulously wealthy. His wealth increased in leaps and bounds as a result of the ill-fated Takwell Gorge power generation station. Indeed, things were so serious then that if you dared say or suggested even in the media that the Takwell Gorge hydroelectric power station does not produce power, <laughs> you'd have heard some people saying, Kwenda rokoto yo jama, weka yeye ndani. That's how it was. And yet common sense dictates that you cannot build a power station along a seasonal river. Yeah. Well, I guess you can if you create a dam that will trap water for a long time. But then this seasonal river was not viable. Okay. Anyway, so this attempt to revive the national system was greatly frustrated by the fact that we no longer have power coming in from Uganda. If the power is coming in from Uganda, and I believe this is truthful, this is factual, if we had power coming in from the Ugandan lines as usual, it would have been very easy to revive the system. Which brings me to my theory number one. Which is, somebody deliberately triggered the power outage. And it was meant to last a short time. 
and things went like clockwork. And then they gave the instructions. Please restore the system now. And then the person who was doing it activated the Ugandan line. Nothing. Huh? No power from Uganda. And the bosses were told this thing is not possible. Why? Because the Ugandan line is not working. Or at least those lines are not working the way they are supposed to. So we can't revive this system. And when all this back and forth is going on, power already had disappeared from the country called Kenya. For hours. Yeah. So people started sweating. And so some people were forced to do damage control. They rushed over to Kenya Airport's authority. Fired a few people. Made a few changes. So that Kenyans can see something is being done. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, there were some people who were sweating. <laughs> and sweating seriously. And I dare add that this theory of mine is supported by the fact that we were not told the truth about what really caused the system to crash. Because we were told it was the Lake Turkana wind power station which of course is not true i believe even technically it cannot be true because if you are supplying just 15 percent less than 15 percent to the national power grid you cannot be that important common sense tells us that now it is important for us to understand what power outage of five hours, ten hours, what the consequences of that can be. Because remember, people using generators, these generators are limited. They are designed to provide power for a short time before power from the grid is restored. So when this extends to five, ten hours, it means that even in a hospital, with an intensive care unit, a high dependency unit with patients there becomes really stretched. And there's always a high possibility that you lose people. There's always a high possibility that damage will be done to patients in these units that depend on electricity from the grid. And the hospital generator is only designed to give a few hours. Now, the power outage last weekend lasted over 20 hours. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, in some areas of the country, it lasted over 24 hours. Yeah, because even when it was restored, it was on and off. What? Now, all this information is very disturbing because it seems to suggest that this failure in our national grid was triggered intentionally and it would seem that it was not done by people out to sabotage the country called Kenya. It was done by insiders in Kenya. That is the suggestion. When you look at all the evidence, it supports that very crazy conspiracy theory. Okay? But why would somebody have needed to cut off power in Kenya for a few hours or even for one or two hours? What would have been the motive? That one still remains a deep mystery. Their theory is all over the place, but it still remains a deep mystery. But hey, don't worry. We are in the season of judgment. And the season of judgment inevitably has a lot of exposure. Because you are shown what is being judged. Secrets usually come out in a very super fascinating, sensational way dramatic way as we have already seen so you can be sure 
we will have the answer to that very disturbing question very soon. Kenyans will have that answer in no time. Mark my words. Now, there's a related video on this channel that I'd highly recommend. There will be a link at the tail end of this video on the top right hand corner. The same link will be repeated in the description area below. Please take time to take in that video. Okay? And then finally, I'd like to remind you about my epic book, Tyranny of False Narratives. Yeah, because this is yet another false narrative we're being fed about why we had no power for almost 24 hours last weekend. Yeah. Tyranny of false narratives has been going on for a long time. And it is very critical that you understand. You can see details on your screens right now. Take advantage of my very special deal. Which also gives you two months free subscription to my weekly intelligence briefings. I highly recommend it. Go for it. It is also another way of supporting my channel and the work I do here. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.